The 1920s was the era of the flapper, post-World War I, where women felt more empowered and therefore more open to exposing their sexual beauty. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to get that classic 20s makeup look and learn a bit about its history. First, I'm applying MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot all over the lid with an equal tools concealer brush. This will ensure that the shadows will go on more smoothly, more opaque, and extend its lasting power. This is just for the sake of you, the viewer, to make sure this look will last. I'm trying to keep it as authentic as possible, but the 1920s did not have any eyeshadow primer yet. We want to set the primer with some loose powder. This one right here is Laura Mercier's translucent powder in order to blend all the shadows effortlessly. Afterwards, I'm dabbing into this burnt beige shadow from the Morphe 35P palette, which I'll be using the entire time, with my MAC 217 brush all over the lid and crease to have a nice base and create an easier gradient for all the eyeshadows later. This is going to be a very heavy makeup look as a typical 1920s woman was a result of the Gibson girl, also known as the ideal fashionable woman in the pre-war period, and also because most makeup products were out in pharmacies for women everywhere to purchase and where to compete with men in the workforce for employment, which I found very interesting during my research. I'm gradually smoking out the eye using darker to darkest shades padded on both the lid and creased area with the same MAC 217 brush. Just work in circular and windshield wiper motions all over the eye in order to deepen it up quickly and nicely. Keep in mind that in the 1920s, women loved the puppy dog eyed look and tried to make their eyes appear more round by doing a cupid's bow shape. So stay away from the winged out cat eyes for this one. Apply a French vanilla shadow on the brow bones to arch the brow up a little bit more. Continue to blend throughout this entire eyeshadow process. The 1920s woman was the first to genuinely bring this artificial doll-like face to life. Crazy dark eyes, long lashes, deep red lips, and a pale face was all the rage in this era. Typically, they would use cold eyeshadow or eyeliner on the lids to create this intense black mess on the eyes, but today we're taking a simple deep black eyeshadow and working slowly with it, blending from the lash line upwards as it can get very messy and muddy very quickly. Fun fact, eyeliner was so popular because of everyone's interest in all things Egyptian after the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun, which I hope I pronounced correctly, but that's a cool fact for you. We're gonna go ahead and leave the eyes for now and move on to the face. I'm using Eliza Vecca's Argan Steam Cream Moisturizer as it creates such a stunning, glowy, and smooth base for all of my clients, no matter the skin type. Then we're applying the Ordinary's Fluid Primer and I am gently massaging that into her skin for a poreless, soft finish. This is Wet n Wild's latest and lightest foundation and it provides a pale, medium to full coverage that we want for this look and I'm applying it with a synthetic dual fiber setting brush from Real Techniques. Using the Morphe 20 Con palette, I am concealing her barely there imperfections and dark circles with the lightest shade in the palette. Apply it lightly in the areas where it's needed as we do not want the face to look cakey. And for my model, I lightly swooped it under her eyes, around her nose, nose bridge, chin, and forehead. Pretty much wherever the light would naturally land on her face. And with a nice light dusting of Laura Mercier's translucent powder, we achieved the matte face that the 1920s woman loved. White shadow and packing and then blending it onto the brow bone to intensify her arch and round eyes. With a dense pencil brush, I'm smoking out the lower lash line with first a dark brown and then with a deep black. Sweep it until you nearly reach the tear duct area. In the outer corners, make sure to connect the lower lash line with the top lash line for the perfect round doll eyes. No black eyeliner on the rim for this one guys, as they wanted to have their eyes appear bigger, not smaller.
Using NYX's Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown, I'm creating sad brows by taking the end of her brow and extending it towards her temple. One thing I did not like about this period was the thin eyebrows, as they first discovered plucking during this time and went far too overboard in my opinion, so I left it out for this look. Keep the arch very soft and round. Back in the day, Maybelline's Kick Mascara was the bomb.com and they loved huge thick lashes. If they didn't own it, they'd mix Vaseline with soot or coal, which is crazy. But to achieve that in 2017, we used Too Faced's Waterproof Better Than Sex Mascara. The messy elixir blushes from the Victorian times were replaced by creams, powders, liquids, and rouge papers. Permanent blushes like permanent lipsticks were super popular, but I don't want my models to have red cheeks forever, so I applied NYX's Sweet Cheeks Dark Raspberry Blush on the apples of her cheeks. Pack it on because they loved looking flushed and keep it round, not angular. For this one, I'm using one of my favorite Fanson blush brushes. Bronzers and contouring were much more popular later on, but I still wanted to accentuate her cheekbones. So I used NYX Pro Contour Palette's grayish powder to create a natural shadow on her cheeks and nose to make her more three-dimensional. Now, the lips were much smaller than their natural outline and were fashioned into the cupid's bow shape. I accentuated my model's cupid's bow by overlining and rounding out her natural shape. Then, I gradually moved towards the corner of her mouth downwards in order to achieve a thinner top lip. For the bottom lip, I kept her natural shape in the center and slowly thinned her lips out to the corners of her mouth for the ultimate heart-shaped lips. For many decades, makeup had been deemed inappropriate since it had only been worn by certain type of women, like prostitutes and stage performers. While some Victorian women did use makeup, it was used very discreetly and not obvious in order to remain socially appropriate. It wasn't until the 1920s that makeup came back with a vengeance, which is why it is my favorite era. Women were so rebellious and provocative, and of course the film industry was booming, but that's for another video. I really hope you learned from this video and grew some appreciation for this era, and there is so much more to come, so please make sure to subscribe, give it a big fat thumbs up, and comment down below what you thought about it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I love you all very, very much. Mwah.